There we go. Yes. 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 Hello. Oh, there. We can hear you say yes. Oh, I can hear me say, I can hear you say yes. You can hear yourself. So, um, apparently I sent out a big group email to everybody, and uh, like zero people, <laughs> zero people found out about uh, that I wanted them to do the, uh, the optimization assignment. I did it. Meg did it. Oh, actually, this is your, this is your assignment, Meg, like, being shared across the internet to... Oh, why, why are we doing that? Um, sorry, is that okay? It's totally legitimate. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to. I can, like, start a new one if you'd rather. You should see my terrible Monday past attempts. What's that? There were a couple, of, right. times, well, there were a couple of times when I was like, this is the answer. And then, like, as I was clicking check, it was like, that is not the answer. <laughs> what was I thinking? So this is the old grade 9 down by the bay problem. Did did you get down by the bay, Meg? No? In grade 9? Do you remember it? I got it. You only have 120 meters of rope, then you have to fence off the, uh, the swimming area. And um, so there's, obviously, there's a biggest area that you can get depending on uh, sort of what dimensions you make it, you're going to find that biggest area. Now, if this was actually a square, what would the optimum, what would the optimum shape wind up being? Uh-oh. I guess square. that was kind of right. If this was a square, a square would be the best. <laughs> we would go for a square. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought Monday was being bad for you. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, because one side is missing that, it makes it so that it's not a square. Normally it would be a square, it would be the optimum use to get the maximum area. But because one side's already being provided by Mr. Beach, it winds up being, what, 1,800, 800, 1800 square meters? Mm -hmm. Being the maximum, that's right. So usually optimization problems wind up being exactly the same thing. Um, usually you have something that you want to be maximized or minimized. In this case, we want the area to be maximized. And of course, what we need to do is we need to make that area expression in terms of only one variable. So almost all of these, well, these left, apparently, uh, apparently, we're boring. apparently we're boring. So in this case, it's length times width. Unfortunately for calculus, we need to get this down to only one Variable. Yeah? Two variables. Oh, two variables? Yeah. One of them is area. area and yeah, that's right. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. We need to express the thing that we want to optimize in terms of only one variable. Almost always we have two variables, and the reason is it wouldn't be an optimization problem if we didn't have two variables. Um, and usually those two variables are related in some way. In this case, our length and width is related. So length is equal to correct. The answer is 120 meters minus 2 times the width. Yeah. And so we can actually use that. We can substitute this expression for length, and we wind up with a single expression. OK? So usually when one of those variables is increasing, the other one's decreasing, and that's what leaves us with an optimization problem. They can get kind of a little bit more complicated, but that's the fundamentals of it. Okay. Time is it? It's a 2.21. So uh, normally we go with sort of, uh, all right. So you heard Meg's going to uh, New Brunswick to the science fair? Yes, Hooray! We were just uh, yeah, that's good. we were just going over the uh, usage of poisonous things, and she's trying to figure out what special awards to apply for. Okay. Those are the only ones that make sense. 
All right, okay. Can you guys see that this box is labeled A? Can you see that, Reed? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's really clear. Oh, really? Yeah, come on. What's really clear? The board. Oh, wow. See how clear it is. Hey, it's pretty nice. You mean it's not normally that clear? No. Oh, you know what the problem is? You know what's good about today? Oh, it just looked really blurry. Oh. No RJ. <laughs> okay. It's not RJ. It's not RJ that's spoiling it. Can you see this? This says B? Yeah. Okay. Like, ready for this? This one says C. Yay. Okay. I'm cheating. I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> Megan is using D. her eyes. Okay. If you thought that said D, that's wrong. Really what happened was I found out I had two exact same size ones. And I labeled one C and one D. So I threw that one. Well, I didn't exactly throw it out. <laughs> I set it here. Okay, good. And uh, I have F. one. F, correct. Oh. Yeah. Can we see them all across the front here? This, this no. one right here is G. Not so, really. Okay. Like, if you look really hard, you can, but. Oh, uh, okay. Like, you can't see them on there. It's hard but, to tell. Yeah, it's pretty hard to tell. Okay. Uh, I am going to start up. So crowd up here. And so RJ can't come because he's got a uh, bad ear. Does that even mean? Although sometimes it's too bad. bad. Yeah. So um like he's sick today, is that what? Uh, yeah, he's not feeling well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so here we go. Screen share and share. And... Okay, let's all log into Socratic. And let's minimize the recorder. Oh, I suppose you want the room number. Can you see the room number? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, you can. I think I think you couldn't see it. That's what I was thinking. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So far, it thinks I have zero people in it. That's it join right. room and it didn't join. Oh really? I thought it was loading and it wasn't, so I just uh, it and I'm. It's a non-joining room. Well, it's loading. Okay. Oh, I'm in. Hooray! Oh, it's mine's still on our old question. Oh, really? Okay. I'm refreshing it. All right. No, it's done now. Okay. Yep. Not so submitted an answer. So I was going to do a quick question. I'm going to see if I actually know how this works now. Because I think I don't have to. End the entire. I don't think I have to end the activity. No. Maybe it's just like another question, another question. It's getting pretty bad when uh, I can't. Put when I can't figure it out, you know it's complicated. You managed to get in read? You can't hear us again. It's like we don't even exist. It must be dropping the stream. Okay. I have a quick question. Satan, I guess. All right. 
I muted Reed, but I don't think that did anything. And I don't think he can hear us. Can you hear us, Reed? Wait. Are you able to chat with Reed? Oh, he's frozen. This thing has crashed. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I have a question for you. Oh, it doesn't do any good to click there. Click here. Okay. So here's my question. Um, do, you rec do you recognize these from anywhere from before? So my question is, oops. They're related to gray nine math. Yeah. So um, these were actually all cut out of this piece of paper. So it was kind of, kind of everybody got a piece of paper. And everybody cut a little X out from down here. So this is the same size here and here because when you fold it up, the two sides have to be the same. Okay. Um, I want you, what do you think the order is from uh, smallest volume to largest volume for these? So we have A, B, C. We've actually got them kind of in declining size of the X corner that they picked out. But I want you to try and figure out what the volumes are from largest to smallest. It is hard to tell, isn't it? Did I, did I, do I have my... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. What do you want me to write? Oh, so like, you know, A comma B comma C or... There's no... D. There is no D. <laughs> Biggest to smallest? Oh, you did. Oh, okay. All right. So you said that C was the biggest. I, I can't really see how big it was, though, so I wasn't sure. Okay. So you said that C was oh, the maybe? biggest. No, I take that back. B A C. B A C. Yeah. B A C and then what'd you say next? E F G. Yeah. Uh, let's see now. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, do they have them on the inside? They actually have them on the inside. Yeah. Oh, okay. Some of them are incorrectly calculated, but that's all good. Would you believe it actually goes like this? It actually goes like. I don't believe that. It actually goes like that. It does. Yeah. So this one's actually a pretty small volume. Yeah, but like what this one? Pardon me? <laughs> yeah, so this one's not very tall, but it's got a big basal area. So yeah, it's kind of neat. So th this, if we actually looked at in terms of the size of the X that we cut out, it would make a nice it would make a nice curve if we arrange this with our X cut out across the bottom and our Volume up the side. Okay, so hey, I've got another question for you. Yeah. Nah. Okay. Sure. I can't just ask another question. Okay. So here we are. It's 43 by 28. Mm -hmm. We're cutting X out of it. I want you to come up with a formula for the volume of the open top box that we make when we, when we cut that X out and then fold it up. So come up with an expression for volume in terms of X.
and take a look at that. This is actually the hardest part of these problems. Why am I doing something? Because you're cutting down the width and the length. So you also, is that also changing the height or no? Yeah. So, yeah, so you're cutting, exactly. So you're cutting down on the width, right? And you're cutting down on the width and you're cutting down on the height. And, and then the size of this is going to determine, yeah. Okay. Okay, and in the absence of in the absence of everybody else, in the absence of everybody else, are they included? Shame. Shame. Yeah, that's right. Shame in particular. Okay, so you have done a pretty good job. Oops, sorry. I'm actually. I'm actually sort of going around. So ordinarily, what's the formula for volume? Length times width times height. Length times width. That would be embarrassing, but I'm not wrong. Times height. Yeah, that's right. I thought first I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Second guess that. Now that you're the only one on the spot. Okay. So yeah. you're right. Uh, we've uh, we've cut down on the length. So the length is now going to be. Oh, there we are. We've got Lithuania back. Reed, you have a hard time with this video call. It's true. It doesn't like the connecting uh, yeah. So I've got 43 centimeters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got length. So I'm going to have 43, and we're subtracting x. Almost. We're subtracting x. But we're also oh. Subtract how much? Ux. Yes. <laughs> okay. What about our width? Because it's 28. Minus two. Yeah. Okay. Main minus 2x. Close. Pretty good. Okay. And then height minus 1. Oh, wait. What is the height of the box? X. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So the thing we want to maximize is the volume. volume. <laughs> And we have our expression all in terms of a single variable, x, which is the size we're going to cut out. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's now expand this into a polynomial. What degree is this polynomial going to be when we're all done? Going to be when we're all done? It's going to be a cube. Yeah. And um, yeah, let's expand it so that we can use the power rule. So I'm going to see if I can do this right. I'm going to finish this activity. Finish. That's close to the line there. Finish activity. And what I'd like you to do on Socrata, when you get this all expanded, is uh, I'd like you to uh, I'd like you to tell me what it is because I'm not sure. You can't do 40, 43 times 28 in my head. There we go. Oh, Reed's here. Reed is in the room. 
This is one of one right here. Thank you, Pardon Marie. This is one of one right here. On credit, this is what we're trying to find the answer to. We're uh, right now. We're just expanding that. and fits and starts. I bet you're planning your strategy. What will you do next? What did you get for the expansion rate? Sorry? What did you get? Uh, did you expand it? No, I don't see the question. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, you gotta have it on. Got to, got to do that. Okay, so here's where we've gone. We're looking at the volume of these boxes. So I don't know if you can see these boxes across the front. They're made from pieces of paper that are 43 centimeters by 28 centimeters, and we cut a square out of the corner that's x by x. And so Megan figured out that it's 43 minus 2x is the length. The width is 28 minus 2x, and the height is x. So we were uh, we were going to expand that because we don't want to use the three-way product rule when we're doing our uh, doing our derivative. And um, I'll tell you what. What if I just show you what Megan's got here? She has. We get for x cubed. Minus 142x squared, and this 100, no, 1204. And I'll just check that. Yeah. I'll just check that. I have every confidence that that's right. I get minus 284, 284x. No, you're right, 142, 1024. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay, we want to find the maximum volume. What should we do? Pardon me? We need to, we've got to find the derivative. Oh, yeah, sorry. I did that. Oh. <laughs> Yes. All right. Find the first. And then. And then. Oh, okay. You've already. I started doing this. <laughs> okay. What'd you get? 12x squared minus 284x plus 1. That's what you got for the derivative. Good. Okay. Um, um, 1204 should be. Oh, yeah. 1204 is right. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, so to find a maximum, what do we do? Now yeah, we need to set b prime to zero. Okay, and my next question is, how are we going to solve for x? Uh, actually, it doesn't factor. That's the good news. This one doesn't factor. So how are we going to solve for x? The quadratic formula. Very good. So this is very bad because this is a this is a rough rough thing. Um, do you guys just want the quadratic formula to all done? Yeah. I agree. Okay. So totally legitimate in these cases. 
uh, but you should be able to do it anyway. Can you see it? Or is it too... It's a bit tricky. Uh, So there. Um, can you see it now? Yes. Can you see it, Meg? Yeah. Okay. So this is just an example of how you can use GeoGebra to calculate your um, to calculate your roots. So as you can see, I just uh, I have my expression for oh, I called it A, and by A I mean V. So volume, I've got my volume, I set it equal to zero, I substitute zero for my volume, and then I uh, solve for x, it does a quadratic formula for me. Pretty nice, eh? So x is equal to what? So x is equal to square root of... No, there's a negative square root of... Right. So there's the negative square root 1429 plus 71. All over six. And then the plus one is square root of fourteen twenty nine plus seventy one all over six. Only one of those is actually relevant. Do you know which one? The positive one. The positive one, that's right. Because you can't have a negative volume. Correct. Well, you can't have a negative x that you cut out, yeah. but it would make it like magnificently large if you could add. Okay, so let's find our maximum volume, and then we'll actually take a look at the uh, we'll take a look at the actual equation. Take a look at the actual graph. There's a bigger number, and that bigger number is around 18. Is that right? Yeah. So I can actually, I can actually go down here, probably. Oops. I can actually grab that whole entire curve. Okay. So I'm going to put a point on the function. And I'll drag the points. And so it looks like you get something like 18.11. Is that right? 18.13 is what I 18.13, and that's going to be actually a minimum volume of like negative 1,000. And then when you do the other one, what did you get for your for your x value for the other square root? For the negative or the positive? The, the negative one. Negative 18.13? Mm. Oh, wait. Yeah. I was lazy and just put a negative sign. You were lazy and just put a negative sign in front of it. Okay. Are you able to see that you should get about 5.5? No, I still got negative 18.3. I don't think so. 1, 4, 2, 9, root. Oh, there we go. 5.5. 5.5. Yeah. So 5.5 is the calculus class. Sorry, we were taking a shortcut. That's all right. Morgan Leverance and his marathon enthusiasm. I heard destroyed. Large. The big tumbler. Oh. Or one of our the big days. fancy tumbler. Yeah. Okay. So Megan, that one's out of play for the uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Probably shouldn't use that for problems. So you can see my volume x curve there. Are you able to see x? So you can see sort of when x is 5.5, you get a maximum volume of 29.91. So about five and a half centimeters. Okay. Good so far. Good one side. Yeah. Right. Um. I think, I think uh, here's what I'd like you to do. I'm going to go to 
this. I'm going to use PDFs. So another optimization type like problem is the cylindrical can question. Okay, there we go. Local farmers. Everybody knows that local farmers are always trying to optimize their uh, can design. Okay, so they're uh, making a cylindrical container. The container needs to hold 432 milliliters of apple cider. And we want to minimize the cost of the metal used to manufacture the container. So we need to determine the volume or the dimensions of the container. So, what two formulas are sort of involved here? Volume. Yeah. And surface area. Yeah. And uh, which one of those two uh, relationships are we trying to minimize? Surface area. Surface area. That's right. And what is the relationship that's going to provide us our constraint? Pardon? <laughs> so, surface area is the one we're trying to minimize, right? Yes. Okay, um, so which one, surface area or volume, is going to provide us our constraint? Volume. Correct. Okay, good. Formula for the volume. Read, what's the formula for the volume of the cylinder? Uh-oh, he might be frozen on us again. Wait, you want the volume of the cylinder? That's just pi r squared times height. That's right. Good. And so uh, notice that our volume, we can actually substitute a number already. It's 432. Good. Now, uh, What's the formula for surface area? Um, that would be 2 pi r squared times 2 pi r times height. Yeah, that makes sense. And you said plus, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can pretend it. <laughs> so very good. Uh, what we want to do? This is the this is the quantity that we want to minimize, and we want to have that only in terms of one variable. So we want to get rid of either the r or the h. In other words, we want either to get express r in terms of h. Oh wow, Megan. <laughs> Either we want to express R in terms of H, or we want to express H in terms of R. H in terms of R. H in terms of R, very good. So we're going to go back to this one. We could actually express R in terms of H and put it in. I think I think yours is easier. I could be wrong. So when we rearrange this one, what do we get? Or so divided by H. Is that what you mean? Yeah, but we want we want H in terms of R, so Oh. Um four thirty two divided by pi R squared. Four thirty two divided by pi R squared equals H. Good. So now what's our surface area? Two pi R squared plus two pi R times four thirty two plus very good. Okay, and notice that we can do some simplification here. Okay. 
I'm missing a chunk of the board. I'm missing a chunk of the board? Yeah, you just got to turn it that way. Okay. All right. Okay. Is that beautiful? Nope. Oh. Can't see the two. Wax beauty. Okay. Is that all the way? Yeah. Very good. Have I done anything wrong? No. I don't think so. Okay. Take derivative. derivative. Take the derivative. 4 pi r. 4 pi r. The next one is harder. Plus the quotient rule. Oh, yeah, we, we don't exactly need the quotient rule for this one, though. Okay, not plus the quotient rule. Okay. Plus. Reed, do you know how to do the derivative of this one? Of that one? Yeah, 860. That would be, that would be um, the same as saying 864 times r to the exponent of negative 1. So that would be you multiply it by negative 1 and make it r to the negative 2, so negative 6. Negative Negative 864 divided by r squared. Very good. Yeah. Now what? So the surface area to zero. You are 100% right. Okay. And. Um, there are a couple of choices now. Um, like you could shove everything over, like shove this part over onto the other side and then solve for, uh, and then isolate the R. Or you can actually, uh, another thing you could do is you could bring this whole thing to a common denominator of R squared. They actually do that in the book. I wouldn't normally do that. I would have moved the thing over to the other side and solved it. In this problem, they actually turn it into this, 4 pi r cubed minus 864 over r squared. And so all we have to do is see when the top goes to 0. So we have to see when this expression equals 0. And that's going to be our maximum. How's that? Did you understand it? Does it make sense? So. Usually look for a relationship. It's the one we're trying to optimize. There's almost always two variables on the right-hand side. One of them is a constraint. <laughs> Sorry. I'm tired. <laughs> one of them will be a constraint. You try and substitute the other variable. Does that sound OK? All right. Um, what do you want to do for, for homework? I'll come up with some nice homework. All right, good. Thanks for coming, Reed. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it was nice to see you. You too. All right. See you. Oh, tomorrow's in Byathon. Yeah. Wednesday's here. a test. Yeah. Are you gonna be studied up for your test? Yes, sir. Tomorrow night. Okay. All right. See you on Wednesday. Read. Bye. Bye.